This is the site of the old Wigton Harbour in Dumfries and Galloway. The harbour closed in 1818 moved to a new site because the River Bladnock had changed its course and a great deal of silting up had taken place. This is the site of one of the worst of the atrocities during the so-called killing times. So here in 1685, two women were tied to stakes and left for the tide to drown them. The two women concerned were Margaret Wilson, who was around 18 years of age, and Margaret McLachlan, who was around 63. During their time, the first king was Charles II, followed by his brother James II. And they were Episcopalians, that is, they insisted that they should be head of the church and the church should be ruled by bishops. Whilst the Covenanters were Presbyterians and they insisted that the congregation had the right to elect its ministers and that God was the, was the head of the church. This led to appalling acts of, of cruelty carried out by many people, but in particular by Sir Robert Greer or Grierson of Lag, known locally as Cruel Lag. Although Margaret's father and mother were both Episcopalians, therefore on the side of the king, the family, that is the brothers and the sisters, had become covenanters and been attending the illegal conventicles in the hills. The brothers fled to Northern Ireland. Now, Margaret, her younger sister, Agnes, Agnes occasionally attended as well. Eventually, after hiding out the hills, they were betrayed and they were captured. They were duly brought for trial in Wigton, where the court found them guilty, but they even suggested they'd been present at the Battle of Bothwell Bridge, which was certainly not true. They were both condemned to be tied to a palisade or a stake and to be drowned by the rising tide. Obviously the surroundings have changed a great deal since then. There was a wooden stake here until about the 1930s. Margaret's father, Margaret Wilson's father, paid a fine of about £100 and Agnes was released. Another person who had been with them was sentenced to be scourged through the town. However, the two Margarets were to be drowned. And the dreadful plan was to have the older Margaret tied to a stake further down so she would drown first in the hope that Margaret Wilson would take the, what was called the oath of abjuration. That is, she would reject the covenanting ideals. In fact, it had quite the reverse effect. It said that when she heard Margaret McLachlan drowning, she said that was Jesus struggling. And as the tide reached further and further up towards her head, she was singing psalms and saying prayers. Finally, at the moment when the, her face was almost underwater, it was pulled upwards, and she was asked if she would take the oath. She refused to do so, other than said that she would pray for the king. And it's said, and this is probably adding spice to the story, not that it needs it, is that one of the court officials, one of the town officials, used his halberd, his sort of spear-like thing, to push her under the water again and, and basically said, if you're thirsty, have a drink. It's also said that another town official by the name of Bell, when asked about the dreadful execution, basically laughed and said that they held on to the stakes like crabs. It's said that his three of his children were born with fingers tied together as webbed and that the man who'd uh, pushed her under the water for the rest of his life had a terrible thirst could never be quenched and he had to constantly carry water with him or to drink from streams and ditches. What adds to this terrible tale is that Margaret Wilson's father had written to the Privy Council in Scotland and he obtained a document saying that they were not to be executed. However, maybe through the activities of Sir Robert Grierson these were ignored and the execution took place nonetheless. Grierson had a whole series of appalling acts held against him. One story is that when he met a tailor and the tailor, when his pockets were searched, apart from his normal instrument of his trade, had some lead 
and they claimed that the lead was going to be used for making lead shot for pistols, when in fact it was used for drawing lines on the cloth. Cruel lag has a reputation that the people in this area every winter time commemorated his cruelty by acting out plays with the ghastly creatures representing Lag himself. It's also said that he went to hell before he died. The talk was that his saliva would burn holes in anything it touched and his feet when placed in water would make the water boil. The old kirk at Wigton is the final resting place of the two Margarets and also of the three men who were hung the same year. The Stuarts had lost power, became known as Jacobites, and there were various attempts to regain the crown. They also introduced the idea that all of this incident had been made up, because the proof shows otherwise. Now Greer or Grierson of Lag was protected by his brother-in-law, who was the Duke of Queensbury, also an arch-episcopalian. Grierson never paid for his evil deeds. In fact, James II, in his coronation honours list, made him a baronet. He did have troubles later in life when, because he was a supporter of the Stuarts, and the Stuarts were deposed, he had various difficulties. It's said that when Sir Robert Grierson died, he was buried in the cemetery of Dunscore, not far from Friars Cass, in the area of Thorn Hill in Dunbrews and Galloway, that the horses taking his hearse to the cemetery died of exhaustion, that a black crow had been sitting on the coffin, and this flew away at the moment he, that he was buried. Also comments that the, the devil had said that he'd lost his brave champion. Many years after these dreadful events, on the sands down by the estuary. Public subscription raised sufficient funds to put up a martyr's memorial. Generally to all those martyrs who died for their version of the faith, those who held to the covenant, the Presbyterians. Also the specific mention made of Margaret Wilson, Margaret McLachlan, and the three men who were the same year hung rather than drowned. Drowning was reserved for the women.